If you don't care about car racing, don't worry. Drive to Survive is not about that. There's something different about this show that makes it stand out as one of the best shows on Netflix right now. What? Let me explain. Formula One is a selective sport, with only 20 seats in the whole world making these drivers the best on their field. This built itself into a lot of politics, drama and complications. That naturally lends itself into interesting stories between drivers, teams, and within these conflicts is where you'll find Drive to Survive. This docuseries is not about cars or points. It is about self-interested individuals, struggling teams, and the gray area between the races. The show uses these politics, dramas, and any interesting conflict as the episode's centerpiece. Drive to Survive takes from low as a whole and cuts down all the noise, and each episode focuses on a singular conflict. For example, episode 7, season 3, which focuses on Mercedes' second seat. The question at stake here is should Bottas, the driver who's been there for the past 5 successful years, stay in the seat? Or should Mercedes invest in a new, younger driver like Russell, who could bring the team new potential growth? What the f was he doing? And the episode does an incredible job focusing on both perspectives. They're not trying to tell you who's wrong, who's right. It's more a behind the scenes look at this fascinating sport, and particularly the complications that comes when you're at that level. But for me, there's one thing about this show that stands out and makes it the best show on Netflix, and that is the editing. Formula One is one of those sports with hundreds of cameras everywhere, from helicopters to wires to road views and even inside the helmets. And alongside all this footage and material, Netflix also has their own crew on site. Hi Netflix! Which gives them the possibility of creating basically anything they want. Which in part creates a whole new problem. How do you pick? That's where focusing on individual problems makes the show so great. They're not afraid of having scenes around two drivers in a particular race, but not even mention whoever won that race. Being able to edit a race down to focus on those individuals at hand, without losing the perspective of the race itself, but never letting go of the protagonist of that episode, is a masterful skill. If it's not relevant to the story, it's not part of the episode. The docuseries treats every individual with attention. It makes you care for them all. Regardless if they're talking about the greatest of all time, or if they're talking about a team struggling to maintain themselves. The show treats every episode with the care and attention it deserves. It's not trying to sell you on the sport, its sole focus is to give you an entertaining show. These are just some of the effects that the show had on the sport. In terms of revenue, the dollar figures has climbed from $1.15 billion in 2020 to $2.14 billion in 2021. That's an 86% increase. Races now average approximately 70 million views. The final race in 2021 beat the Super Bowl, with 108.7 million people watching live versus the 101 million people watching the Super Bowl. Promo 1 has always been a selective sport, usually held for the select few. So the version that most people get is just commentary on TV which quickly talks the entire race, which result in a hard to follow sport which has been losing audiences for years. Driving to Survive gives you that one on one with the drivers, with the team and with the team principles, and you understand what's happening behind the curtains. A natural problem you find whenever you're getting something so big as Formula One and focusing on a singular conflict is that that conflict will come across larger than it actually is. The show sometimes feel more dramatic than real life, which results on drivers like Max Verstappen refusing to be on the show. He expressed that the show wasn't realistic on how they portrayed him in previous seasons, making him not want to be part of the show anymore. The problem is they will always position you in the way they want, whatever fits the story of mm. the series, right? You know, and the series is all about excitement and it needs to be exciting, right? So they, they position you in whatever fits to the, to the to the mm. episode. Mm. So uh, for me, that never really works. And I don't think it was uh, the real me. So it's important to watch the show with a more realistic perspective. But from personal experience, I wasn't a very big fan of Formula One. I was curious about the show, which led me to watching a couple of episodes. And a couple of episodes became an obsession where I watched the whole season. So I was curious about what was happening and I wanted more. That led me to watching races and understanding how everything works. And now I consider myself a fan of Formula One. 
thanks to Dry to Survive.